Good evening. Thanks for being here. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Didn't feel like we'd make it there for a while, but we are officially there. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, one of the traditions we have here at Ledgewood is every service we open up with scripture because it is the most important thing that we can do every service. And so tonight we're going to continue to stick with that. And so I'm going to open with 1 John, uh, verse number one, or chapter number one, verses one through five, and then skipping to verse nine, and that'll make sense in just a second. So it says this, sorry, I'm out of breath. It says, that which is from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at with our hands and have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life, the life of Peter. We have seen it, we testify to it, we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us and our fellowship with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> and his word, and if we do not, I'm sorry guys, I'm going to start this again. I'm going to start this again. It's good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we thank you for tonight. God, my mind is a million different places right now. I can't even turn to the right place in the Word. But it's Christmas. I got in a life that's turned upside down. I got in a life that everything is messed up. And you sent your son to the world. I'm in the form of a baby. And one day would raise and grow to be the man that would take our sins. So that things as small as messing up and reading in the wrong place in the scripture is losing your train of thought. God, to rebellion against you, which we're all guilty of, have all been cleansed and cast away because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what we come to celebrate tonight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The scripture I wanted to read is 1 John, and it says that he has come and made his dwelling place with us, which is the miracle of of Christmas. Thank you for being here so much. It's good to see you. I've been waiting for this day. The first song we're going to sing tonight is O Come All You Faithful. We have those words in your bulletin. You guys that come regularly know this. If you want to stand, please stand. If you want to stay seated, please stay seated.
guests and maybe seated. Did you notice when you walked in we had a special visitor tonight? I want to thank Mr. Patricia Kurtz for being here and, and leading us in worship and playing the harp tonight. I also want to thank, especially thank uh, all of you for being here to the handbell ringers tonight that will be playing uh, some hymn, a hymn for us. But then Maryland, um, you guys know this, you've been with Maryland for decades now, for years, and you know the servant's heart that she has. Um, this does not happen uh, without Maryland. And so friend to friend, uh, servant to servant, thank you uh, for everything you do. Um, please thank Maryland if you see her tonight. This is absolutely of her doing. Um, such a great time to be together, a tradition that we've been following for several years now. And again, we're going to continue with that. I want to ask the Sullivan family if they go ahead and come up and lead us in worship and the lighting of the Advent candles and then praying together. Please join us in the responsive reading. It's your green bowl. It's the green paper in the bowl. Advent is a time to celebrate. We celebrate that joy that is in Christ Jesus. We proclaim a victory that is stronger than any defeat. We, co we proclaim a peace that is stronger than any conflict. Joy to the world, the Lord is We proclaim a freedom that is stronger than any bondage. Joy to the world, the Lord is Tonight we light all five candles. As we light the last candle, the Christ candle, we, we are reminded that we are here, that we are to celebrate the message of Christmas by proclaiming what Christ has done and sharing it with others. As the light from each candle fills this room, we celebrate the coming of Jesus, the light of the world.
seated. Tom, Mr. Patricia Terrace is going to play a special piece for us. Uh, infant Holy, Infant Loaded. Mm -hmm.
you've never spent much time looking at the lyrics of that song, and don't skip verse two. Um, what an incredible song. Thank you, Miss Patricia. Well, thank you again for being here tonight. Um, this is one of those services that we look forward to all year long. And I think all of us have been kind of nervous. Was it going to happen? Was it not going to happen? Or are we going to be allowed to do this? And I'm incredibly thankful that you're here with us. Um, I wish that we could be live with our family on Facebook, um, but that wouldn't work tonight. And so they'll see it later on recording. And so those of you watching this on screen later, I'm thankful that you chose to put this time in as well. Um, but it is a special time to be together. We come together for Christmas. Uh, Christmas has a lot of meaning to it. It means so many special things to us. Um, but the reason of Christmas is we come to celebrate the fact that our Heavenly Savior came to be born as an earthly baby. Um, an incredible story to think that God chose to come and be with us. But it's been a wild year. Um, as I think about what the last 12 months have looked like for us, because Christmas is kind of this culmination of everything coming together in a wrap-up, if you will, and it just comes together at Christmas, and we get to celebrate this thing, but also the passing away of an old year, looking forward to a new year. But this year's been rough. We've got this one thing, and it ties us all together, this, this one commonality of difficulty that all of us have struggled with this year. But then also, each one of us has struggled in a different way. Many in our church family have lost loved ones this year. Loved ones have gotten sick and passed away, and they're grieving those loved ones as they walk through the Christmas season. We also celebrate the fact that there's been newborn life several times in this church. But even with that, the changes that come with that in the midst of COVID and all the things that happen there, it's difficult. And each one, each family in the room, each person in the room, you walk through difficulty of your own all the same. And maybe you're like me as I've walked back and I've looked back over the last 11 and a half or 12 months that I've been with you in New Jersey. And I continue to ask this one question over and over again foolishly. What's next? What's going to come next? What's behind the next door? What's the next chapter? What's tomorrow going to hold? What's 2021 going to be like? What could possibly go wrong next? And as I sat in my office and prayed through God, what in the world would you want me to say for Christmas Eve? Thinking about that same thought pondering through my head of what's next, what could possibly happen now? The Lord, through his Holy Spirit, just this comforting spirit, said, stop worrying about what's next. And be thankful for what's now. Be thankful for what you have. And instantly I thought of what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And he said, what do you have that you have not received? What do you have that you have not been given? What do you have that you have not been gifted? Christmas has so many wonderful traditions. We have the great tradition of coming here and singing songs together. We'll celebrate one of those traditions tonight after service is over by candlelight, substitute candlelight, but it's going to be somewhat the same. You have traditions at your house as well. Recipes have been passed down from great-grandma to grandma to, to daughter to, to now granddaughter. And you'll cook those and you'll eat those. Some of us will gather in groups smaller. Some of us it will look more normal for us. You may sing songs or read the Christmas story. There's all kinds of traditions that we celebrate at Christmas time, and they're all good. And then there's the gifts. And this isn't a time for me to harp on the idea of gift giving. You're not here to hear that tonight. Because we don't have to avoid the idea of gifts at Christmas. Gifts are a part of Christmas. And they always have been. If you look at the Christmas story, and you've heard it many, many times, and you look back over the story many, many times, you see that even in the Christmas story, there's a banner on the far side of the room over here where you see the star that many of us tried to see a version of this past week. It didn't even come close. But there was a star in the sky as the wise men were led from a distant land, walking across to meet this Savior child, the baby king that lay in a manger. You think about all the difficulties that they walked through, all the struggles that they walked through to meet this newborn king that was there. And they brought great gifts to him. Gifts to lay at the feet of the one who was worthy of those gifts. I could go through this room and I could ask you, what's your favorite gift that you ever received? And we could have a long conversation about our favorite gift. Many of us in this room, we've moved beyond the receiving of gifts. We started the new journey of now we have those favorite gifts that we've given to other people. And you can think about the smile that you caused when you gave away your favorite gift or you shared your favorite gift. I could go to some of the boys and girls in the room and may at some other time, not tonight. And I could say, what's the thing that you're looking forward to the most? What gift have you been wanting all year long? And if you're anything like me, that's kind of an ever-evolving list. 
It's always part of a fun game. And we can ask, but tonight is not about the what's to come gift. Tonight is really about the what do we already have gift. What have we already been given? What do we have because of the Christmas miracle? And I'd like to share this story through the most popular verse in the Bible. John 3, 16, one that you've heard so many times. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. God, in this room, we've been given so much. God, most Christians that gather around the world don't have electricity to gather in. God, those that live in cold climates, they don't have heaters to turn on. If they want to go and gather with other Christians, they have to walk there, many of which have no shoes on their feet. The idea of a Christmas outfit is silly to them because they have one outfit. Where we've been given so many things materialistically. And collectively in this room, all of those things, those material work gathered together among all of us don't add up to the one thing that truly matters, that which we've been given in your Son. So Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for an opportunity to pause and to stop and think about who we already have because of Christmas. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've been given so much already. And the goal tonight is to think on what we already have. And so going through John chapter 3, verse 16, a verse that we've heard so many times in our lives. The first thing that we see, for God so loved. God loved in this way. God showed his love in this way. And if you have even an elementary look into the scriptures, if you've even taken an introductory glance at the scriptures, you know that God doesn't do anything just a little bit. God doesn't do anything part way. God doesn't do anything in a way that will just suffice. God does everything to the fullest. God gives his all for everything. That's what makes him God. And so for God so loved the world, God loved with everything he had. He poured out all of his love on us. What does that love look like? We see in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the apostle Paul tells us, but God demonstrated his own love towards us. And then while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And before Christ could die for us on a thief's cross, he had to be born as a baby in an animal, man, animal's manger. We've received so much already. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who is this son? A couple of things right there, even in that statement, only begotten son. And we think like, why in the world did God stop with just one begotten son, one that was birthed literally from God? This, you will give birth to a child and he will be of God. The Holy Spirit will overwhelm you and you will give birth and he will be God's son. Why just one? Because that's all it took. There was no need of another. Jesus sufficed and passed every test that there was. Jesus was fully powerful and could fulfill everything that needed to be fulfilled. And only one begotten son so that there could be millions of adopted sons and daughters. So much richness and truth in that statement. But also, what does the Bible say about this son? It says so much about him, that he is the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. He says, I am the good shepherd who watches over my sheep, and I care for them. He says, I am the gate, the only righteous way for you to enter into the heavenly kingdom. Jesus is the narrow way that we must walk for the road of salvation. Jesus is the one who was tested and tempted in every way common to man, yet was without sin. And so he is our great high priest who understands us and can sympathize with us. In Isaiah chapter 9, a very famous Christmas passage, says some other things about him as well. It says he is the wonderful counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Clearly talking about the child there, talking about the Son, the Son of God in this situation. But there's that strange statement. Did you catch it in there? Wonderful Counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace, talking about the Son. But then it calls him the everlasting Father. 
strange how it calls the Son there the everlasting Father, instantly drawing our minds to something that we don't understand. None of us in this room understand it, the Trinity. Draw back to the idea that there is one God because that's what the Word says. And that that one God is in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There is no division of them. They are different and yet one. You don't get that and I don't get that. Hebrews tells us that in faith we believe that God created the whole world without anything to work with. In the same way, we believe in faith that the Trinity is. And I know the skeptics in you say, but that word's not even in the Bible. Neither is your name. But God desired to put you in the story as well. So in faith, we believe this here. And it says that he, the son, shall be called the everlasting father. Isaiah chapter 7, another verse about Christmas, says that one day the virgin will give birth. And he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. And Jesus in the Gospels multiple times. He said, I and the father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. If you've heard me, you've heard the father. They can't be separated. You cannot separate the Father and the Son or the Son and the Holy Spirit or God and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is one, always is one. And so again, God giving us so much in the fullness of his love by giving up his Son, his only begotten Son, has given of himself. We have so much already. The scriptures tell us that there is no greater love that man can know than for one to lay down their life for their friends. And that is exactly what has happened starting with Christmas. It's been a wild year. It's been such a difficult year for everybody. Anywhere you go in the world right now, you have something in common with all people. With all people, we all have this commonality now of what we've walked through. It's been such a tough time for Christians. Those who have confessed that Jesus is Lord believe that as sinners, Jesus came to die on the cross and rose from the grave that we might be forgiven. It's been a difficult year for us as well. We've struggled through meeting together. We've tried to figure things out. and we've, we've bruised ourselves and bumped into walls and turned corners and tried to make this thing work. For God's people, it's been hard. But this is not the first time it's been a hard season for God's people. And it won't be the last. Isaiah chapter 8 speaks of another hard time for God's people. As I, God's people have rebelled against God in this situation here. They sinned against him. They disobeyed him. And God has told them, you'll be cast into exile if you don't listen to me. And they find themselves exactly where God told them they would be. Cast into exile, ruled over by the Assyrians. And things aren't going well. Things are difficult. They can't go where they want to go. They can't do what they want to do. They can't live normally like they used to live peace that they used to know doesn't look all that great. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 22 describes it this way. Look toward the earth and see only distress, darkness, and fearful gloom. gloom. And all are thrust into darkness. Guys, if that doesn't describe the world that you and I are walking in right now, then I don't know what does. Amen. The beauty of 822 is that it wanders right into Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1. It says this, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. How can this be? How can it be for those surrounded by doom and gloom and darkness and sadness and all the stuff that they walk through in Isaiah chapter 8 and all the things that we walk through right now that all of us in distress can walk out of it and not deal with it any longer? And it's only because of the truth five verses later Verse 6, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. It's a miracle of Christmas. It truly is our only hope. The baby in a manger who would one day grow to be the, sinner, the savior of sinners on a cross. The one who would break open the grave and would rise again. That we could be free. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. There's good news in the midst of the doom and the gloom. But it only comes through Jesus. We have so much already given to us 
so much to be thankful for. I hope you have a great Christmas. I do. I hope that tomorrow morning, if your family opens presents or if you open presents tonight, that you have an absolute blast while you do it. I hope that you praise the Lord that he provided to you and that you have the joy of being with someone that you love. Being in a warm home. Being with other people. That you leave this place or leave watching this knowing that you've got people that care for you. When you eat that meal, think that you've been given so much in that meal. But I pray more than anything else as we open those presents or share those meals or sing this last song that we're going to sing in just a second. That the focus of Christmas will always be not about what's to come or what's behind door number 1,000, but what do we already have in the baby born in a manger, the Christmas story. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. God, I ask for forgiveness in front of my friends. Lord, I want so much. Lord, I can chalk it up to American consumerism. I can chalk it up to culture. I can say that it's the way that I was raised. or I can give a million different lame excuses. But the truth is, is I'm not content. I'm not content because I allow my eyes to wander from the one born in the manger. I allow my eyes to wander from the one who lived a sinless life so that my sins could be forgiven. I allow my eyes to wander from the one who started in an animal's feeding trough and ended on a man's cross but overpowered death and now sits at the right hand of the Father speaking my name and your name into his ear. Help us that whatever we do this night and every night that you give us in the future, to not worry about what's to come, but to remember who we already have. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> the last thing we're going to do is a cool tradition that Ledgewood has. We're going to lower the lights. It's probably going to get really dark. I've actually never been in here when it's that dark. And you've got a little candle. If you didn't get one, if you'll raise your hand, and I'll get somebody to pass one out to you. All right. Drew, would you help me out? Would you grab a candle right there for the buddy and just pass it down? Right up here, if you give it to Mike Sullivan, and he'll pass it down to Drew. Mike, can you take that and just pass it down to Paul or Zilla down there? Awesome. Thanks. There's going to be a little bit of an introduction as we sing Silent Night. I'm going to ask you to stand on this one. I don't do this for every song, but I'm going to ask you to stand. And we're going to sing Silent Night together, and then we'll dismiss after that.
much for being here tonight. The lights kind of did a weird thing, and so we'll go without the microphone, too. <laughs> I, I sincerely love you guys, it, and it's been a great year. In the midst of all the difficulties and everything else, getting to serve as your pastor, but more importantly to me, uh, becoming your friend. Um, and for me and my family, we wish you guys a Merry Christmas. Uh, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, we have so much to be thankful for. I'd like to pray a blessing on you. As you go and celebrate with friends and with family, and just remember that Jesus truly is the reason for, not a season, but the reason for everything that we have and will have. Thank Father, I thank you for my friends. God, you've blessed us in every way. And I pray that tonight you would bless us as we go. Help us, God, we are weak. Keep our minds tuned in with you, focused on you. And we praise you, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.